Okay, so this is going to be a, um, a quick summary of uh, chapter 6. Uh, I don't think I put this up yet, so let me put that up real quick. Um, you know, chapter 6 really is about the work energy principle. So first, what is energy? Um, so for a particle, we say the energy is mc squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Okay, so that's the particle energy. I don't have a better marker. Let's see if blue works. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, now, and first of all, you'll notice that this has what people typically call mass energy and kinetic energy combined. Um, and the second important thing is this is a scalar. It's not a vector. It doesn't show the direction. So we could also write this as E equals mc squared plus k, where k is a kinetic energy. Um, now, if the particle is going near the speed of light, that's, that's all you can really say. You can't say uh, a, a, a simple value for k. Um, and so you would just, if you wanted to find the kinetic energy, you would take this whole thing minus mc squared, that would be the kinetic energy. If it's moving relatively slow compared to the speed of light, <clears throat> then you can say k equals one half mv squared. And this is really the magnitude of the velocity squared. Okay, so what do we use energy for? The work energy principle says work is a change in energy. That's all it says. Um, but what is work? Well, work is, the full definition is a path integral from point one to two of some force dot dr, where dr is a element along the path, and f is the force that does the work. Um, you know, the only thing we do in this case, in this class, are simple cases where this is a, a, a nice integral. Um, you know, if you wanted to, say, take a ball and move from here to there along this path, uh, then, then you would have to integrate, a, you'd have to know a function for that path, you'd have to integrate, you know, this is, that would be dr, the dr vector, and then let's say the gravitational force is, is down that way. And so you could do the, the work done by gravity. It wouldn't be easy. Okay. But you could do a simple path like this, right? Because then dr is constant, f is constant. And in fact, you don't even have to integrate. So in the cases when uh, the path is a constant, uh, delta r, and the force is constant, then you could just write work equals f dot delta r. And this is the dot product, right? So I can write this as f equals fx, fy, fz, delta r equals, I'll just write this as delta x, delta y, delta z. So the work would be the dot product, you take the x components multiplied together, plus the y components multiplied together, plus the z multiplied together. So you get fx delta x plus fy delta y plus fz delta z. Okay, so the, here's, if you, one more thing about work. This depends on what your system is, okay? So work is the work done on the system. So if I have just a ball, then any force is acting on that, if I had just the ball as a system, any force is acting on the ball would, would do work, and then the change in energy, energy would be the change in energy of the ball. Okay. Okay, so but sometimes we want to have bigger things, bigger systems. Uh, so if I have If I have, let's say, two balls gravitationally interacting like this, this is one, this is a two, and this would be F uh, one on two, and this is F two on one. Uh, if I include both those balls as my system, then I have this, these other things that do work. I have, I have, I have another work, I, but it's kind of like an internal work. Um, so if I have internal forces, then instead of saying uh, those do work, instead we're going to say uh, 
there's a potential energy. So a change in potential energy is going to be negative the work, internal work done. So you can see that the change in potential would be negative the integral from 1 to 2 of F internal dot delta R. Uh, so it would be negative. So really what you're doing is taking uh, a work on the left hand side of the work equals delta E and moving it to the other side it becomes negative. So typically you could say if you have a low mass, so you could say, let's write if this is work external equals change in energy plus delta U. Okay, where delta U is a change in potential. And in this chapter you saw three types of potential energy. Uh, if you're near the surface of the earth, then U equals MGY. If you're dealing with real better model for potential energy, uh, U equals negative G M1 M2 over R. This is a scalar, and it looks a lot like the gravitational force, but it's not. Uh, G is the same gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. These are the two masses of the objects interacting, and this is the distance between their center squared. Uh, and then we also have um, electric potential energy, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, Q1, Q2 over R. This one's positive, and that one's negative. And the reason is that for electric potential, we can have attractive or repulsive forces. If these are opposite in sign, then you get a negative out here, and it looks just like the gravitational potential energy. But they could be the same sign repelling, and so it looks a little bit different. Uh, we write it like this because we say that when they're at infinitely dis far distance apart, then they're not interacting, and so that there would be no potential energy. And this, as R goes to infinity, U goes to zero. Uh, okay, I think that's really, oh, there is one other thing. Uh, if this is true, uh, if the change of potential energy is negative the work done by that force, if I know a potential energy, I can then find the um, corresponding force. So Fx, Fx equals negative du dx. Actually, that should technically be a partial, but the uh, but that's okay. So this will give the x component of the force is the derivative of the potential as it changes with x, okay? which is really undoing this. Okay, so if you just know the potential, you could find the force. Okay, so that's um, chapter 6.